Daf Yomi, Tractate Bav Metzia, page 33. A, top of the page, with the words Rovitz, the low route sun. It is written, if you see the donkey collapsed under its burden, Exodus 23.5, the Brayta infers that this obligation to unload a burden applies with regard to an animal that is collapsed, but not with one that is a habitual collapser. Collapsed, but not standing. Under its burden, but not when it is unloaded. And under its burden, meaning a burden that is not excessive, that the animal can bear. The Gemara reasons, and if you say that the requirement to prevent suffering to animals is by Torah law, what is it to me if the animal is collapsed? And what is it to me if the animal is a habitual collapser? And what is it to me if the animal is standing? One should be obligated to unload its burden in any case if the animal is suffering. The Gemara answer is in accordance with whose opinion is this Brayta? It is in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Yossi Aglili, who says that the requirement to prevent suffering to animals is by rabbinic law. And the ordinance does not apply in these circumstances. The Gemara supports its answer. So too, it is reasonable to explain the Brayta in this manner. As it is taught in the Brayta cited above, under its burden, indicates a burden that the animal can bear. About whom did you hear that he holds that line of reasoning? It is Rabbi Yossi Aglili. The Gemara affirms, learn it from that Brayta. The Brayta is in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Yossi Aglili. The Gemara asks, and can you establish the Brayta in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Yossi Aglili? But isn't it taught in the latter clause of the Brayta, under its burden, but not when it is unloaded? What is the meaning of not when it is unloaded? If we say that it means that when it is unloaded there is no obligation at all, isn't it written in that case you shall lift them with him? Deuteronomy 22 verse 4, teaching that there is a mitzvah to unload the animal. Rather, it is obvious that the meaning is that when it is unloaded, one is not obligated to load it for free, rather he may do so for remuneration. About whom did you hear that he holds that line of reasoning? It is the rabbis. Apparently, the Brayta is in accordance with the opinion of the rabbis and not the opinion of Rabbi Yossi Aglili. The Gemara answer is actually the Brayta is in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Yossi Aglili, and in the matter of loading, he holds in accordance with the opinion of the rabbis. The sages taught in the Brayta is written, If you see the donkey of him that hates you collapse under its burden, you shall release it with him. Exodus 30, 23 verse 5. I might have thought that one is obligated even if he sees the animal from a distance. Therefore, the previous verse states, If you encounter your enemy's ox, or his donkey going astray, you shall return to him. Exodus 23, verse 4. If the Torah had written only, If you encounter, I might have thought that one is obligated to unload the burden only if there was an actual encounter. Therefore, the verse states, If you see. And what is seeing in which there is an element of encounter? The sages have calculated it as one of seven and a half portions. In other words, two fifteenths of a mill, and that is the measure of a wrist. It is taught in a bright after loading the burden onto the animal, one walks with it up to one parasang, one parsa, to ensure that the burden will not fall again. Rabbi Bar Barachana says, and he takes remuneration for accompanying the animal, as that is not included in the mitzvah. New Mishnah. If one finds his lost item, and his father's lost item, tending to his own lost item takes precedence. Similarly, if one finds his lost item, and his teacher's lost item, tending to his own lost item, takes precedence. One finds his father's lost item, and his teacher's lost item, tending to his teacher's lost item, 
takes precedence, as his father brought him into this world, and his teacher who taught him the wisdom of Torah brings him to life in the world to come. And if his father is a Torah scholar, then his father's lost item takes precedence. If his father and his teacher were each carrying a burden, and he wants to assist them in putting down their burdens, he first places his teacher's burden down, and thereafter places his father's burden down. If his father and his teacher were in captivity, he first redeems his teacher, and thereafter redeems his father. And if his father is a Torah scholar, he first redeems his father, and thereafter redeems his teacher. Gemara, the Talmud says, with regard to precedence in the return of lost items, the Gemara asks, from where are these matters derived? Rabbi Yehuda says, that Rav says, that the verse states, only so that there shall be no needy among you. Deuteronomy 15.4 This verse can be understood as a command indicating that it is incumbent upon each individual to ensure that he will not become needy. Therefore, your property takes precedence over the property of any other person. Rabbi Yehuda says that Rav says, although that is the halacha, anyone who fastidiously fulfills this principle with regard to his property at the expense of others' property ultimately comes to experience that fate. He will become impoverished and others will prioritize their interests at his expense. The mission teaches if his father and his teacher were each carrying a burden, he first places his teacher's burden down, and thereafter places his father's burden down. The sage son of Brighton to Sefta 230, his teacher with regard to whom he, the Tanaim stated in the Mishnah that his burden takes precedence, is his teacher who taught him wisdom, meaning the profound analysis of the Torah that constitutes the Talmud, and not his teacher who taught him Bible or Mishnah. This is the statement from a mayor. Rabbi Huda says the reference is to any teacher from whom one learned most of his knowledge, be it Bible, Mishnah, or Talmud. Rabbi Yossi says even if he enlightened him in the understanding of only one Mishnah, that is his teacher. Rav has said, for example, Rav Sechor is my teacher. With regard to these matters, as he explained to me, the meaning of the term in a Mishnah in Kalim 13.2 Zuhama Listeron, a utensil with a spoon on one end and a fork on the other. Shmuel rent his garment in mourning over the passing of one of the sages who explained to him the meaning of a Mishnah. Tamid 3 6 that describes the two keys that opened the compartment through which the priest would enter the sanctuary each morning. One is the key with which the priest would open the inside lock. He would insert his arm up to his armpit through a small opening in the door and reach down and open the lock that was at the bottom of the door on the, on the inside. And he would go through that door into a compartment. And the other one is the key with which the priest opened the lock on the inner door of the compartment through which he entered the sanctuary and he opened that lock directly. Ula says, the Torah scholars who are in Babylonia rise in difference before one another and rend their garments in mourning over one another's passing. In, contra in contrast to Eretz Yisrael, where the preeminent Torah scholars and teachers served as the heads of the Torah academies. In Babylonia, most scholars studied Torah with peers, and there was no preeminent teacher. But with regard to returning a lost item, in a case where both one's father and one's teacher lost an item, he returns the lost item to his preeminent teacher before returning that of his father, and not to his peer or to one who taught him the meaning of one Mishnah or one item. Rav Chizda raised as a lemma for Rav Huna, the Mishnah or one term. Okay. One term. Rav Chizda raised as a lemma for Rav Huna. If there is a student and the teacher needs him because he serves as his peer, 
and study partner, what is the halacha with regard to precedence in a case where he finds a lost item belonging to his father and one belonging to his teacher? As Rav Chizda was Rav Huna's disciple colleague, Rav Huna assumed that Rav Chizda was referring to himself and said to him, Rav Chizda, Chizda, I do not need you. On the contrary, you need me until you complete 40 years of study before me. They grew angry with each other over the perceived insults and the harsh reaction, and each did not enter to visit the other. Rav Chizda was contrite and observed forty fasts, due to the fact that Avuna was offended, although it had not been his intention to offend him. Avuna observed forty fasts, due to the fact that he had erroneously suspected that Rav Chizda was referring to the relationship between them. It was stated that Rav Yitzchak Bar Yosef says, that Rav Yochanan says, the halacha is in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda, who says that returning the teacher's lost item takes precedence only in the case of this preeminent teacher. Rav Achabar Rav Huna says that Rav Sheshit says the halacha is in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Yosef, who says that returning the teacher's lost item takes precedence even if the teacher enlightened him with regard to only one Mishnah. The Gemara asks, and did Rabbi Yochanan say that? But doesn't Rabbi Yochanan say the Allah is not always in accordance with the opinion cited in an unattributed Mishnah? And we learned an unattributed opinion in the Mishnah that returning the teacher's lost item takes precedence in the case of his teacher who taught in the wisdom of Torah. The ruling of the unattributed Mishnah is in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Meir. The Gemara answer is what is the meaning of of wisdom in this context means the majority of his wisdom. Sage Tana Brighton. For those who engage in the study of Bible, it is a virtue but not a complete virtue. For those who engage in the study of Mishnah, it is virtue and they receive reward for its study. For those who engage in the study of Talmud, you have no greater virtue than that. And always pursue study of the Mishnah more than the study of the Talmud. The Gemara asks, this matter itself is difficult, as the bright is self-contradictory. You said, for those who engage in the state of Talmud, you have no greater virtue than that. And then you said, you should always pursue the study of the Mishnah more than the study of the Talmud. Rabbi Yochanan says, 